Hello and welcome to Retro Game Connect. I'm Dan Mastrani. I'm Ian Butterfield. And today, we're going to meet with one of the other guys that was on the Bulls in the 90s. Bugs Bunny? Not him. No, we're going to be checking out Slam City starring Scotty Pippen. You may remember him as the guy that was Michael Jordan's teammate. <laughs> probably, probably would have been more famous if he wasn't on the team at the same time as one of the greatest basketball players ever. Ah, well, he wasn't in Space Jam. No, no, he was not. So that that probably hurt his career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't be remembered <laughs> fondly like all the people who were in Space Jam, which I feel like people think better of now than they did when it actually came out. It's kind of become like something, it's kind of like Journey where people didn't take them seriously in the 80s and then they were a joke for a while and then people have gotten to like unironically loving Journey. Yeah. I, it, it's sort of a bit of a cult thing. Plus yeah. like people in my generation watched it as like kids in the 90s. Yeah. So Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Basketball. Bill Murray. Awesome. Yeah, there you go. But uh, he's not in that game. But uh, speaking of singing about basketball, he does do the theme for the game. So we'll, we'll check that out in a minute, see if that's any good. Uh, but this is probably not one of the uh, bigger of the FMV games. This is one of those the games that pretty much set the Sega CD's reputation as FMV games, full motion video, uh, which basically means that they shot footage of live actors and use that to kind of assemble a game. I feel like FMV just kind of didn't go well as, a, as like a technology. It's kind of a thing of at the time people got really excited about it because it was very visible, something that you couldn't do before. I mean, you'd had laser disc games in the arcade, uh, stuff like Dragon Slayer and... Uh, I think, uh, what did they, did the one they did with Loop in the third footage was, I think, Cliffhanger, uh, that Space Ace. They had, a, they had a several different, like, Laserdisc games, but it wasn't something you could do at home, because, I mean, who owned the Laserdisc player? Those things were huge and expensive. Right. I think my uncle did, but that's because he had, was doing karaoke at the time, so it was, like, a business expense. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was something that was very visibly something that you couldn't do on home consoles. Like, all of a sudden, wow, you have real people acting. Now we have people with little dots all over them. Yeah. I mean, nowadays you can actually take footage of real people and, and put them into an interactive game, but at the time, this, you know, like, when CDs were first introduced as, like, a cheap enough for consumers, you know, people were like, well, what do we do with all the space? <laughs> and one of the ideas was fill it with video. Uh, but this is actually one of the games from Digital Pictures, who were the big proponents of FMV. They almost single-handedly were, were driving uh, the genre. Hmm. Uh, it was actually um, founded by a guy named Tom Zito, uh, who was, he had some film credentials, and he actually uh, graduated from NYU, uh, the School of Film and Television. So he had an education in that. Uh, he had, uh, for a while, he was a freelance writer. Uh, one of the, he worked for for Rolling Stone, I believe. He also worked for New Yorker. Wow. And while he was doing freelance for the New Yorker, he got an interview with Nolan Bushnell, who was, uh, of course, the uh, owner of Atari. Of course. Yes. Well, he's, well <laughs> he is pretty well known as the owner of Atari. He is, he's pretty. He's also behind Pong. You Tell me you've heard I, of Pong. I, I, okay. I have played Pong. Okay. Not on the original... Yes, but Nolan Console Bushnell Console. is is pretty instrumental in yeah. the history of video games. So at the time, he had a new company called Axlon. Uh, this was after he'd left Atari and sold it off and and basically... Got off the sinking ship? Yeah, yeah. Time Warner was, was busy <clears throat> running into the ground. I recently rewatched Blade Runner, and it made me laugh <laughs> that uh, Atari is everywhere in that movie. Oh, wow. And, are, and you know when it takes place? Hmm. 2019. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, when it was made, they were very successful. Oh, yeah. 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 And then not so yeah. much. They had home computers. And, yeah, they were, they were a big deal. 
But uh, he had he had gotten out of that, and he had a, he he had a new business in California, and I guess they really hit it off while they were doing the interview. So they became friends, and uh, Zito moved to California to join his company. And around eight, uh, I think I wrote this down wrong because I have 95, and I'm pretty sure I meant to have 85. <laughs> but around 85, he got the idea. He wanted to do like an interactive television thing. That that was the idea he had. And he, sort of like what you see at bars. Like five years ago, They're like a big TV box that you put the coins in and you can play the little games on it. Maybe. Oh, that's an interactive TV to me. Yeah, I'm not familiar with what you're talking it about. It looks so like I... this big. Don't ask me why I was in bars five years ago. Hmm. I mean, I could have been in a bar five years ago, but I wasn't. <laughs> it's a long story, but I wasn't illegally drinking. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. I, I went to like bars and pubs to eat. Man. Yeah. Okay. Never love games. Okay. I, I'm just saying I've never seen this, so I don't know how close really? it is to the concept. Really? Okay. You never saw those? I, I don't drink, so I never, I've they never like really spent time with Unos, bars. Unos, man. At where? Unos? Remember that, like... I've No. No? No, I've never been there. You never played one of those things where, like, it had the two pictures, and you had to pick out the differences between the pictures? It was a little touch screen. No? Hmm. Weird. Kind of sounds like the educational stuff they would have in museums in the nineties. Yeah, know, the they, they just reskinned it for bars, kind okay. of, and put a coin machine in it. Oh, I mean, we can bring this back to video games, mm -hmm. and that was where video games were kind of launched. Like the early pong machines and face wars were designed as things to put in bars. So there we go. We're bringing it back. But and he convinced Nolan Bushnell to uh, to let him look into this interactive TV concept that he had. Uh, they put together a team, uh, according to a man uh, named Rob Fulop. Uh, they had David Crane, who was the creator of Pitfall, which was um, Activision's first big hit. I do know of Pitfall. Pitfall, there you go. And also the creator of Space Wars, which is uh, Steve Russell. That was arguably one of the first arcade games, if not the first. I mean, that and Pong were like the two ones there at the beginning. But Space War, um, just a quick aside, is uh, version of a game that really started on mainframes, which like vector drawing, you have a little ship and you would fight another ship. And it didn't do that great because it was a little complicated. Uh, they did uh, eventually simplify it into asteroids. Oh. So if you know asteroids, I do know asteroids. That's kind of a descendant of Space War. Doo. Yeah, it's, yeah, you had, exact, doo. you had the exact, doo. in Space doo. War, you had the exact doo. same like doo. triangle doo. ship. Doo. 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 It was actually pretty complex because there was a star you'd be around and the gravity of the star would affect your trajectory. Huh. Because, of course, this is a game made by computer nerds in... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in uh, mainframe labs in the 70s. But they got... These, you know, the people who got together, pretty smart people, uh, they created a prototype using the ColecoVision's video hardware because uh, apparently, you know, it was pretty simple at the time. Basically, like the way a lot of the early game systems worked is they couldn't actually create backgrounds. They would just like overlay games over like the video signal from the TV, which would be black because they was not on because you wouldn't generally have it on a channel. Mm -hmm. So um, they used Clicker Vision because that mm -hmm. way they could overlay overlay game graphics over whatever was coming in from the cable. Like early on, I think they were kind of envisioning it as something to go along with. Cable, which was also pretty new at the time. So maybe you get a program from your cable and you have a video game that went along with it. But I uh, can't say that has ever worked out in the history of ever. Like, I, I think they literally tried to make a video game and a TV show that mm -hmm. coincided and it just didn't work out. Wow. Defiance. Yes, but not linked in that way. And, Basically, in that, the TV show actually provided the background for the video game. Yeah. And like, and I don't mean background as in story background. I mean as in, like, the video game is overlaid over the TV show. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I know what you mean. I think in other things, there was, like, a kind of a light gun thing in, I want to say, late 80s, early 90s, where the targets were, like, the show you were watching. There was, like, a videotape that went with it, and I, I guess it was programmed to know when, like, the guys you were supposed to shoot came up. It was, like... Captain Laser or something. I, I don't. It sounds horribly complicated. Yeah, but this is this is kind of off the thing. But you know, he uh, spec'd it out. Figured it would cost around seven million to develop like a saleable product from this. 
So I went to Nolan Bushnell and said, hey, uh, we can do this. It's going to cost us around $7 million to put the whole project from start to finish. And Nolan Bushnell was like, yeah, I'm not funding that. We don't have $7 million. Uh, it, it sounds good, but you're going to have to find somebody who can bankroll it because that's not me. So uh, they hooked up with Hasbro. And Hasbro said, like, okay, this sounds like a good project. We will, we will fund your project. Uh, around then, they, uh, they started calling it Project Nemo. Uh, Hasbro basically uh, funded it in exchange for the video game rights. So they So make, what you're saying is if they were to make a documentary about this, it would be called Funding Nemo? <laughs> yes, there you go. But, you know, they would have the rights to the games and get the profits, and that's how they would make their investment back. Uh, though they were having some trouble with the project. It was taking longer than Hasbro wanted. Hasbro wanted them to speed up development, and it got to a point where, you know, Zito had to be like, okay, am I going to stick... Producers. Yeah, am I going to do what Hasbro wants, or am I going to go out on my own, have more control, but then have to find someone else putting up the money? And he ended up going with Hasbro, so he ended up uh, leaving Axlon and forming a new company called uh, ISIX. So they, they, kept, uh, they kept working on the project. Uh, Hasbro was getting a little antsy, so they did kind of a proof of concept called the Scene of the Crime, which I think would later kind of evolve into Night Trap, which is, which is their big famous game that was involved in the whole 90s video game violence trial. And uh, I think that, yeah, it's what they're most known for. The which is why kids are playing these violent games, and well, why are you letting your kids play violent games? Yeah, it was you're, actually. You're the one with the money. I think I've mentioned this before, but there isn't actually that much, really much violence in Night Trap. But it had, I don't know. I'm not really sure why they. I think it's another case of politicians hearing about it and not really paying attention. So pretty much anything with politicians. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you remember um, a few years back the mm. scandal around Mass Effect. Yes. Yes. The Mass Effect sex scandal. Yes. And where they were in to showing the entire sex scene in the report, <laughs> and apparently because nobody realized that was the entire scene. Yeah, that's the entire scene. You see nothing. I did romances in that for the achievements, and you see nothing. Yeah, they were showing the entire scene on the news report and saying yeah. like it's hardcore pornography. It's like no, you're showing the entire scene. It's right behind you. It's not even that's all it softcore. Is. You're literally showing this on the news right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. But at that time, you know, they needed something that was going to deliver video. So um, for a while, they were going to do it with VHS, which, of course, for, for the younger people, is a magnetic tape that you can store video on. That's how we used to watch movies. I would say imagine cassettes, but with video, but that still doesn't help. They don't, they don't have that, no. Um, See, imagine, back when we used to have physical media. Imagine if you took two rolls of scotch tape, mm -hmm. put like the tape bits together, and could roll them between each other, and that somehow gave off video. Yes, with magnets. It was yeah, with magnets. Because magnets. magnets, how do they work? Well. Theme references. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I might be able to explain Magnus, but I, I don't. I don't think we have enough time. Anyhow, uh, so they yeah, they got pretty near an actual product, but uh, by that time Hasbro spent a lot of money. Uh, they figured the system would probably cost around three hundred dollars. Uh, the NES was down Which to around a hundred at, at the time. Was a lot more than yeah. what. Three hundred dollars is worth now, but the important part was that that would be two hundred dollars more than NES. Yeah. So they they canned it in uh, around uh, January of nine. So they basically, uh, yeah, the project was going to be, I guess. You like my no, yeah, enhanced I trumpet I, I, I know what you had. My yeah. enhanced trumpet skills right there. Being able to play the, the, the six-piped trumpet. Okay, it was, it was, if you say so. Yeah, you, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm not a musician, man. I, I, I'm they, sorry. They have, they have three. Okay, yes. I, I, I see which is why that's now. funny. Okay. Also, one of my ancestors actually wrote taps. Fun fact. There you go. Yeah. I was just waiting for you to finish so I could, so I could get out with what I was saying. Uh, but they, were, they would have called it the control vision. But after the control vision went down, uh, they... You know, they'd already shot 
like they had Night Trap pretty much the same. Well, they had Sewer Shark. They had the footage for that, which was, you know, one of their other big releases. And they needed somewhere else to put it. So they actually um, began negotiations with Nintendo. Really? Nintendo was going to have their CD add-on with Sony. Uh, the Nintendo PlayStation. Ah, uh, yes. I think you know what happened with that. Didn't uh, Panasonic buy that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this is this is complex. But basically, I was uh, being a joke. Yeah. Sony would have had the rights to the video games produced for because they were using their proti- proprietary Super Disc format. So, Sony would have gotten all the royalties for the CD games. Nintendo was like, "Yeah, no, that doesn't work for us." Yeah, basically, they were like, "We're gonna make this magical console," and then they were all like, "No, we don't want to make this console with you." So they broke up and made their own consoles. Yeah. But the, the important thing for the story today is that the Nintendo PlayStation did not happen. No. And so, it's sort of a weird thing to say, the yeah, Nintendo PlayStation. Nintendo PlayStation. So um, we got the N64 and the Sony PlayStation yep. instead. They ended up... Uh, the world would never be the same. The fun fact about the N64 is uh, Sega actually had... Uh, Sega. Could have had first dibs on that technology, and they decided not to go with it. It would have been interesting if, like, because if that had been the Saturn, because it probably would have been CD powered, which is one of the things that people had problems with on N64. Sega it would have been super it would have been weird. Did not know how to run their company after like 1994. Yeah, well, there was a lot of infighting between Sega of America, which was the part of the company that was actually making money, and Sega Japan, which is the guys who were like, "How come you were making money on the system that we can't make money on?" So it was it was awkward. And then there's this whole, you know, Sonic. Yeah, but, you know, they, uh, and they ended up going to um, Sega because Sega had their CD hardware coming out, the Sega CD, and working with them because they were pretty much the best deal after that. Actually, you know, Tom Zito's gone on record saying that he wasn't very happy with the Sega CD hardware. Uh, he really liked the Nintendo hardware because the Super Nintendo had a much larger color palette, so... Uh, they were able to get much better video mm. out of uh, the Nintendo PlayStation than they would have than they were able to get out of the Sega CD. But that was what was in town. It was either I suppose it was either that or the uh, Turbo Graphics CD, and uh, um, I think by that point it was already clear that the uh, Turbo CD was not going to make it. Could you imagine what games we might have gotten if that was the Nintendo PlayStation? how that would have all worked yeah out. i mean there were there were a few games that were in development for the nintendo playstation that were cut down and put on cart like um i think like secret of mana had like a whole like large swaths of the game cut out because it was originally going to be a cd game well but like would spyro be in smash brothers why isn't spyro in smash brothers like they could probably still do that. they could if they wanted to i mean yeah. it's not owned by sony yeah not, like, not... they put cl- they put cloud in i mean Sky- <laughs> so... skylanders you know, yeah, they, Skylanders has exclusive characters on uh, Wii U. Well, but so. it has Spyro. Right. It's a Spyro game, like, and it's multi-platform now. Yeah. So get on that, Nintendo. Yeah. Well, I want, I, they're I not want, doing any more DLC for the current one, so. Well, yeah, but the maybe he'll be in the next one on uh, whatever the NX turns out to be, and we shouldn't have mentioned it because by the time this episode comes out, everyone will know what the NX is and it'll have a different name. Anyhow. Last thing I did want to mention about this is uh, they produced the games I kind as... I want them to call it the Super Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's probably... I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. Do it. Anyhow, um, they tried to produce their games as closely to movies as possible. Mm-hmm. And so basically, you know, they, they sit out and do shoot like a movie. And they assemble that into a game. So now I think right now we should just turn around and... Play the game. Yeah, check out the game. Sega. Oh, yes. So here's Digital Pictures logo. Digital Pictures. As you can see, it's super grainy. So grainy you can make bread with it. <laughs> So you see, they got the intro just, just like a movie. 
Dun 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 dun. No, 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 no. So this is apparently um, being performed by Scotty Pippen himself. So the premise of this game is that uh, you are a street baller. Uh, we'll probably just go ahead and do fingers for now, but because uh, that's the disc I put in. And you have to win games to earn respect. Okay. So uh, if I can recall your buttons, uh, I I'm believe this is shoot. Uh, this is to drive Let's toward the hoop. You got it. And uh, C, I think it only does stuff in defense. I think C is uh, try to steal. So as you can see, the way that does this game is they you have the footage, the recorded footage of uh, the player in the background, the guy that you're dead up against, dead 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 and you've got your character is uh, superimposed. I don't I don't even know what's going on. What what did they say? I I don't know. We have the volume turned down because we don't want to echo. All right, you might have to press the button again instead of holding it. I'm not sure. I didn't know if that would like power throw it. Oh, I'm on defense. Yeah, so I think you want to hey, tap hey, again. Hey, oh, hey. oh, you actually stole the I ball. Won. Nice. Oh, hit the dunk. Dunks are I, good for respect. I totes, totes murdered his respect on me there. Yeah. So you need. She was clean. What? I don't know. You need one million respect to fight uh, to uh, play Scotty Pip. You're not fighting him. You're uh, playing back This is too easy. I'm not even sure. So what's going on? Hey, 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 hey. Come back here. Oh, hey. He stole again. Nice. I think you're doing better than I did the first time I played this game. Oh, I broke it. Oh. 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 No, no. I did break it. Wait, wait. No, it's OK. It's OK. OK, we got Work. this. Shit. Hey. No, what? Yeah. Nothing happened. No, I don't even know. Uh, I forget. Did it, did it, did this did might it, be first, it, did it. To, first attempt. Oh, how, how do you even? I don't. I don't. I like how he's just talking to the camera instead of to you. I still don't know what's going on. Yeah. Just gonna. Oh, air ball. Oh, apparently you could have jumped up to catch what? that. Oops. Uh, oh, we just broke past it. See, this is why basketball needs blasters. <laughs> uh, I still don't know what I'm actually doing. Okay. So if he's going to one side, you might be able to break past him, like, you know, by going to the other end and hitting the B button to run. If you move close enough to the hoop, you'll, you'll uh, automatically do a dunk. See, he was like 10 feet away from me. Yeah. This this game does not know what depth perception means. Yes. Yeah. Oh. He's still up from me, yeah. There. Ding a ding a dergen. So, as you can see, this is it's kind of imprecise, right? I don't think it knows what the word precise means. Yeah. Because that's kind of my forte. Yeah. Is like precise counter moves. Yeah. No, I, I see that also that your respect has dropped all see, the way see, down. See, I'm going left, but I'm not going left. Yeah. Like, why didn't you throw? I hit the throw button. What just happened? He just stole the ball, I think. Well, no. I I was on defense, and he just charged past me. I... Shoot the ball. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what this game means. Yeah. This is why I didn't want to say too much before. Oh, that's fancy. This, this game is horrible. <laughs> This is why I didn't want to say too much before you started playing. Because 
Focus sweat running points on you so fast. You got me right. down bad, man. Okay, is it, it's finally over. Also, is it me or is this representation mildly racist? Uh, no, yeah, it could be a little bit. I think you did better than I did the first time I played this. So this is why I just wanted you to play, so you could understand the problem from this game. And it's that, what's happening? Why do you do, when do you do things? When's the right time? How are you supposed to figure this out? So now we're going to try something a little different. Get to the main menu. We can go ahead and uh, and uh, select different. Uh... Dun, 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 oh, dun, dun, you got credits. That's exciting. You'll notice that uh, none of these are anybody. Nope. Like I don't know any of these people. The only person that's involved in this game that I've ever actually heard of is Scotty Pippen. So feel free to select whoever you like. Uh, we've already done fingers, so we'll play somebody else. Mad Dog. Mad Dog is fine. So everybody gets their own disc. Please insert disc three. Here it is. The console is a Dalek. Yes. Go ahead and press that. Isn't it fun that you have four discs that you have to switch between? So we're going to go into the options before you start the game. Is there the option to punch them? Yeah, that would, that would be that? nice. I like that option. Yeah, no, I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, does it have turbo? Oh. You probably don't want turbo on. I hit. I think I hit C. Oh, hey. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, this is uh -huh. where you want to be. Okay, so we're going to turn training on. Trimming? Training. Training. Yes. And you can go ahead and uh, exit that, yeah. And now we will try again. Your ball, Junior. Okay, hyper masculine Dave. Yeah, so now it'll it'll give you some give you some tips. Wow, that is some awful, break. awful dithering. Yes, when it tells you to break, press the B button. Weak. Next oh, you should at right least now. make an effort. I I did though. I hit the button. Yeah. Okay. Oh you put your hands up. Even when training on it, this is still kinda of difficult. So is the when you see break? Oh, hmm. Maybe your timing was off. I don't think this game knows the meaning of the word timing. Yeah. See again, like I was up in the air and could have thrown the ball before the guy even jumped. Like, what is going on in this game? Oh. Yeah, it what? seems a lot like, I don't even know. It what? seems a lot like what you're doing, what the game is telling you to do, and it still doesn't work. Yo. This five dollars go buy some game. Wow. You know, joke's on you. I made five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to try to to break in the direction to tell. Oh, hmm. Man, he went over Interesting. Like a speed bump. What? So I would think the the direction you're supposed to be in when you're going is the direction to break, but it doesn't seem to be working. I don't think this game was built to work. Yeah. It's traveling, man. I'm gonna do you like I do my homework. Quick. Give up the rock, punk. What? <laughs> Didn't even make sense. What? <laughs> So just confirm for me, are, are we doing even worse with uh, the computer telling us what we should be doing? It, it, the computer's barely even telling me anything. Yeah. Every now and then it's like break, and it's like, what is, what do you mean? Break is, is the B button, is the B button to run in. 
So when it tells you to break, move to one of the sides away from him and hit the B button, which is the middle button. See, it's moving without me even doing anything. I think you have you might have to hold it to seen that one before, come on. Hey, hey, now I made ten dollars. Like again, joke is on this guy. Yeah, so try holding the button. When it says break, hold B. That didn't, didn't, well, that didn't work out. I don't, again, I don't think this game was made to work out. Yeah. Well, he works out, so that's something. So I did what the game told me to do, and then it... Did it, that. Yeah, it, it punished you for listening to it apparently. You go, woo. You go, what? Thank your girlfriend for me. Fifty bucks for my rent. <laughs> what? What? I don't know. What? What? What is going on in this game? <laughs> Alright, so I think we're ready to stop. <laughs> I don't think it was ready to start. So I'd like to apologize to Scotty Pippen. I'm sorry your name is on this game. <laughs> I think now you maybe understand why FMV games have a bad reputation. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no song to uh, forego the, uh, the bad reputation of this. Hmm. It, it, it should give a damn about its bad reputation. So I think what they're going for is you're supposed to be like looking at cues from the guys you're playing so you know when to break or when to shoot or whatever, whatever. But the footage that they record doesn't really seem to have much to do when, when they actually want you to do those things. Whoever funded this game, <laughs> I'm mad at you <laughs> because you let this happen. Yeah. You let this happen. Yeah. This is the major weakness of FMV, is it locks you into a pattern. Like, you can't change it. It's been recorded. Your fate is sealed. Yes, it's, it's put down on the disc. There's only one way a scene can play out. You can shoot... It is your destiny. You can shoot alternate versions, but it can only change so much. Yeah. So you find yourself with a game which is supposed to be interactive that you have a really hard time interacting with. Yeah, you can say that. Uh, you can say that about this game. It, it might be hard to interact with. I mean, we even turned on training mode and we still couldn't figure out when we were supposed to do anything. Yeah. This is the exact, you know, this is why I wanted you to play it first with training mode off so you would understand what I experienced the first time I tried this game. It's like, what do I do? When do I do it? Why does this work sometimes and not work other times? What's going on? What's going on? And I said, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the 10 hour version of that was probably infinitely more entertaining than that game. Yeah, so the whole thing is just, it's a mess. And I. And it's I, not even a hot mess. No. It's, no, it is a steaming pile of mess. Yeah, it, it's not fun, and it's confusing, and I don't know who thought it was a good idea. Shame on you. Um, I do not enjoy this game. I can't, I can't really figure out how to play this game. I, again, I don't think it was actually meant to be played. Yeah, I, I don't know. But there, at the time, it was impressive because it had real people. There, there's a yeah. reason that... When you go to the movies, there isn't a little button to decide, like, let Kylo Ren get the lightsaber. Let Rey get the lightsaber. No, it happens. You laugh, but that, I think people have actually tried that. Yeah. Well, there's a reason they're, <laughs> they're not still there. And also, uh, if that's Star Wars spoilers to you, I'm sorry. You, you had your chance. It's got to be it's gotta be by the time this comes out, this you're going to be able to buy it. Like, by the so time this I, I comes know. out, like, it's going to be the what movie you, that, what you were it, doing. it's going to be the year that, like, Blade Runner takes place, so. You, you might, you might be worried about spoilers for episode uh, eight, right? Exactly. Eight, by, by the time you're watching this. And, so I, I, and I it's going to turn out that Finn is, like, the kidnapped son of Lando or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, could be. 
Actually, I feel like they would have hunted him down if that happened. He would have been like, guys, my son was kidnapped. Mm. And they'd be like, blasters. Mm. Yeah, no, there was no Lando in the... He's going to be in episode eight, though. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Good that they, good they got Billy D. Williams. Billy yeah. D. Williams is confirmed back for episode eight. This is how much we enjoyed the game. We're just <laughs> we talking, talking about Star Wars. Wars. Why, uh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Cause. So back, back, on, back on topic, uh, I don't hate FMV for things that are not supposed to be interactive. I don't think it's terrible to have a live action cutscene in your game. I mean, in the era where they were put in for cutscenes, yeah. they don't look horrible. Yeah. Compared to now, just use the CG. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do something pre-rendered, you might as whatever. It's stylistic choice. It's fine. I mean, honestly, if you're gonna do something with in-game models, just do it in real time because you're really you're wasting disk space on a yeah. pre-rendered thing that looks pretty much the same as the in-game graphics. What was the point? But I mean, like for instance, I thought uh, I liked the cutscenes in Black. I don't know if you ever played Black on PS2 or Xbox. It had live-action cutscenes. Well, even like PS2, I remember playing Revenge of the Sith on PS2, yeah. and they had cutscenes from the movie. Yeah, that's which also fine. Also, kind of full motion video. Yeah, like that's I mean, perfectly okay. I kind of enjoy like '90s uh, games that make a lot of use of FMV. Uh, ironically, I like like I love like Phantasmagoria and the stuff that has these ridiculous, super low budget cutscenes. But I don't want to play a game where you're actually supposed to. <laughs> where you're playing that. the yeah. low budget cutscene. Yeah. No, I want to like have an actual game, and then see some Z-list actor with horrible special effects. Exactly. Not this. Yeah. So like Seventh Guest, where I'm actually solving a puzzle, and then I get somebody who can't act. That's okay. I like that. That's fine. I grew up on Godzilla movies and. Original Doctor Who in 60s Star Trek, so... Well, I mean, there's a difference between can't act and can't be. <laughs> yeah. Spock, can't be. Kirk, can't act. <laughs> at least at the time. It was over he's, he's, he's good now. It, it, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, William he's, Shatner's great. I love, I love William Captain Shatner. Captain Kirk is nutty. <laughs> uh, but he was popular with the ladies. You, you, ever, you ever play Kirking? No. Yeah, it's where like someone does something and then you yell Captain Kirk and they have to do the same thing they just did but overact it. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Still, again. Now, how- what I did do once, I did make a joke once uh, uh, in something I wrote based on, uh, I had uh, Bill Shatner and John Lithgow walk into a be, bar. Be, uh, be great friends based on the fact that they both saw something out in the wing of the plane. Oh. Anyhow, yeah, so um, we don't like this game. So this game was bad. so bad and uninteresting that we both talked about Star Wars and Star Trek. Yes, this, this, we, we don't even want to go back to the topic of Slam City starring Scottie Pippen. I feel like this game was detrimental to Scottie Pippen's career. Perhaps I, if he I hadn't like made it, Slam City, he would have been like remembered next to Jordan instead of like that guy who was on the team with Jordan. I, I feel like pretty I good, feel I like this video game was detrimental to our society as a whole. Yes, <laughs> it was like a million. Like that, yeah, I think we were all dumber for having played this video yes. game. Like this, this is like the reason we still don't have equal rights. This is why people hate. In all seriousness, it's because of games like this that the Sega CD has such a poor reputation. When there are actually some really good games on it, but yeah. All people can remember is like Sewer Shark and Night Trap, and and Slam City. Yeah, and stuff like this, and Prize Fighter, which is the other FMV game I have, which is also completely inscrutable. It's sort of like how the prequels, all people generally remember are Jar Jar and Hayden Christensen's acting, but mm. you and McGregor, pretty good. I liked him exactly. Yeah. You know, Darth Maul, Liam Neeson, like. There were some high points. Good things. But all people... I thought the final fight wasn't too bad. Like, you well, know, the Duel Anakin of the versus... That... Yeah, Anakin versus... Uh, oh, the Battle Obi-Wan. of the Heroes. Yeah, yeah. that's yep. one of the best lightsaber fights that was like, pretty good. of all. Yeah. You know? But but all but, people um, remember. I don't like sand. Mm. <laughs> it's it's coarse. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, that whole romance was so forced. 
I blame you, Digital Pictures. Padme Amidala deserved better. And it's because of this video game that she didn't. That she didn't get what she deserved. Uh. <laughs> Does uh. Digital Pictures still exist? No. Okay, no. so they're, they're not going to be mad at us. I mean, they might be mad at us because those people are all still alive. Yeah, <laughs> but if they're not mad at themselves, then they don't deserve to have an opinion about no, this no. game. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom Zito. I don't actually hate you. I don't know um, who you are. I, I get what you were trying to do. I just don't think it worked. To, uh, to quote my favorite character from Ren and Stimpy, no, sir, I didn't like it. Hmm. There you go. Okay, I think that's a good way to end it. Uh, so if you enjoyed our uh, bout of hyperbole after we barely played <laughs> Scotty Pippen in Slam City, please subscribe to Technically, our... Technically, we played know. half the game. We did play half the game. <laughs> like, that was well, literally half of the game. There's four discs, and we played two of them. Yes, there you go. And to, just to show how much time they were able to actually spend with Scotty Pippen, he is on all four discs. You can play Scotty Pippen for an NDS. So that shows you he probably did like a half hour shoot. Probably because, you know, I make jokes, but he was a pretty big NBA star. He probably cost a lot of money. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, but, you know, enjoy this episode. Please give us a like. If you want to make sure you catch future episodes where we play things that are actually interactive, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Well, you can find us on Tumblr, retrogameconnect.tumblr.com. Uh, Facebook.com backslash uh, Retro Game Connect. I'm trying to remember all our social media here. Uh, Twitter at Retro Game CNCT. Yeah! You can follow both of us on Twitter. I'm at ENG Butterfield. I'm at New Type Cool. So you can interact with us. Yes. We're more interactive than this game. We are. It's true. It's 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 creepy. That's the thing. Yeah. We are not... You well, can, we're pre-recorded right now, but if you get to us on Twitter, we will be live and you'll be able to interact with us. Yes. You yes. can, like, tag us and things and talk to us and we'll be like... Yes. I'll, I'll just send you a video of me doing be like, that. Thank you for paying attention to us. Yeah. We know there's lots of people on the internet who want you to pay attention to us, to them, so thank you for paying attention to us. Yes. So I've been Dan Mastriani. I'm Ian Butterfield. Bet you figured that out. <laughs> and please join us next time on Retro Game Connect. Gah! It's my basketball oh, throw. Airball. Yeah. Just like this game. Really ending it now.